I'm Annabelle and welcome to Meeple Village. Today we're going to be playing uh, There's Always a Window and this is a zine or a, a game where you create your own story. So join me at the table and let's go take a look at that window. All right, guys, we're back with another zine. So I played one on the channel before. Uh, I just met Beth Jackson, uh, one of the designers of the game, and uh, we've been uh, talking back and forth. And I'm gonna be honest, I've been playing board games for a long time, and I didn't know such a thing as a zine existed. So I'm just learning about them, and uh, maybe some of you are familiar with them. I I'm curious though, have you played zines before? Did you even know that that they existed, leave me a comment below to, to know because I, I feel like I was out of the loop this whole time. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'm not alone in that. But anyways, this one is called There's Always a Window. And all you need for it is something to write with and a deck of cards. And uh, you turn over here and it says, every wonder needs the following. So uh, a pen and paper or something to write with and on and a, stump, a standard shuffled deck of playing cards with jokers. And then the prompt tables you'll find uh, as you read along, which are all the information that is here. So first, let's reflect on what draws you to your window today. There's always a window and there's always a reason to wonder what's yours. And there's a little bit of information about the tables and how to, how to use them. So throughout this guide, you'll see tables like the one below. When you do, you can choose to leave it up to fate by pulling a card for your answer, pick up your own answer from the list, or make up any answer you want. So we have a little bit of flexibility because the idea in, in this design game is for you to create a story. It makes you the storyteller. So it's uh, you're playing a game where you are cr the creator of the story. So you have no idea what's going to happen in this game. And uh, I know we did one last time and I thought the story came out pretty epic. I mean, I accomplished my goal and it was it was great. And it also had a crafting system that was kind of cool. Uh, but we'll see what adventures await for us today behind the window. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our reason for wondering. So why did we go to the window? And I'm going to go ahead and um, use luck as my friend. <laughs> so we're gonna shuffle these cards and then draw one and see why and then uh, we'll have to put it into a story. I'm, I'm guessing that'll be my guess <laughs> uh, because you know again we are creating a story so and of course my cards are uh, Star Wars because uh, it wouldn't be Annabelle if you know something that comes in the Star Wars uh, motif I don't have it in Star Wars. So, so we drew a K of hearts. So looking at this uh, Luke Skywalker with uh, the K of hearts, our reason for wondering is, uh, here's the hearts, you need fresh air for reasons. Okay, if you feel like you need it clarified. It wasn't because you farted. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad to know I didn't fart. I just needed a little bit of air. So that's uh, that's the perfect reason, I guess. And then the game instructs us that every time we use a card, we put it back in the deck and we shuffle the deck. So we will do that. And uh, then we'll move on to the next page, which I put over here. So, so I needed some air for reasons. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Uh, I should have probably done better with organizing these. Here's our first page that we already finished with. We finished with this one, so we move on to this page. So let's see what we get. There's just something about a window. Looking out and daydreaming leads to yearning for better views are far off places. This is where you find yourself today. The room you are in starts feeling a bit small and you wander towards that portal to, well, anywhere but here. The day may drag on or be going by too fast. There's always a window calling to be looked through and give your mind a different place to explore. Though on this day, at the exact time, someone or something else is looking through uh, to and feeling the same feelings as you. Oh, so somebody else is looking through the same window or another window, maybe the same window. This phenomenon, the rare occurrence that it is, causes a rift connecting the two windows between you and this kindred spirit. Okay, so we are connected somehow. And then we're going to find out a little bit about the rift. And again, we have a table. So let's, uh, let's see what card we get. Just a little bit more shuffling for good measure. And we get a treble. What, uh, what is this? <laughs> I don't even know what that one is. But sure, uh, I see at-ats. 
Okay, so for the treble, or yeah, black, black either one of these, this rift has opened a new world into yours. Oh, nice. You can observe but cannot pass through. If someone or something comes through from the other side, they or it may never return. So let's continue. With the information you have gathered from the prompt table so far or made up for yourself, begin to journal or write a story about these happenings. Set a scene with how you're feeling, what brought you to the window. Describe the opening of the rift, include how you discover if you can and can't go through it, and how you're feeling about this. In the coming tables, you'll begin describing what you see. But for now, focus on the event and the feelings they evoke. When you feel you've explored these things and written enough about them, you may move on. So our story begins in uh, we did not fart, but we needed to go to the window for reasons, <laughs> which I'm guessing it's my turn to come up with those reasons of why I needed to go to the window. Uh, and then we find out that this my, uh, my window is connected to some another world, a completely uh, different world where there's somebody or something uh, that is also looking at me. I think it'll be more interesting if it's another person, so we're gonna go with that. I don't know who it's gonna be yet, uh, but uh, let's start writing. All right, here's my first entry. <laughs> it's, um, it told me to talk about my feelings, not so much what's going on, so here's what I came up with. My allergies are killing me and I feel the urge for fresh air. It all started when Sky, Clem, and I were sitting on the couch. The pups are always eager to get pet and climb on me, and today was no different. After 10 minutes of petting and getting love or licks, I started to feel my lungs break down. Not working at full capacity, I long for air. I run to the window looking for respite. I quickly open it, but to my surprise, I see a world that is not my own staring back at me. I rub my eyes and look again, completely forgetting my lack of air. I see someone staring back at me. I try to reach them, but I can't. It seems I cannot pass through the window and neither can they. I must have the most confusing look on my face because that is how I am feeling. What is going on? I have looked out this window many times before. Why is today different? And uh, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm actually drawing from real life experiences. <laughs> I uh, remember uh, after COVID being on vacation with the pups and uh, we rented a, an Airbnb and I was with them and uh, I felt exactly like that. Like I couldn't breathe, like my lungs were not fully working and I actually it was really cold it was up in North Carolina I mean for me anything is really cold because I'm Puerto Rican and I'm Florida I live in Florida so um, for you it might have been great weather but for me it was freezing but I had to sleep the whole night with the window open a bit so I could breathe and once in a while I wake up in the middle of the night and take a breath of air and just feel my lungs because all night I felt like I could not breathe so that's where I'm drawing inspiration from for this story <laughs> because it's true it happened but this time and I'm kind of glad that it didn't happen when I was in North Carolina because imagine if I'm in a weird stranger's place right in a place that is not my my house and i look out the window and i see a completely different world out there i would freak uh here i set the 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 setting in, in my in my house so at least i know hey, i've looked through his window before what's going on what's happening today uh, but i think we've got enough at least to get started so let's move on uh with our story or with the prompts so the rift begins to open but most of your view of the other side is still obscured by swirling, sparkling colors. You do get your first glimpse of your kindred spirit, though. What do you first notice about them? And okay, we're gonna get a card. I think I'm, I, I could pick my own, I said, or I can make up something. But I think um, just to keep it interesting and, and push my limits a bit more, I'm going to go with luck. <laughs> so we get a, a K, uh, another Luke Skywalker. Didn't we get this one already? So we go to the J, Q, or K. Their clothes are incredibly colorful. So that's what I noticed about them. And we're probably gonna go right back to writing. What are your first, yeah, because it has the, the writing thing there. That, that, that should tell me, right? Okay, okay, I, I understand this. What are your first impressions of your kindred spirit from this glimpse? Well, all I know is that uh, he or she has colorful clothing. Do you immediately think they have a particular job, gender, goal in life, intention with the rift, or anything else? How are you able to ascertain so much from so little, and how much do you trust it? If you're able to get a glimpse at them, then they must be able to see you too. What do you think they notice about you first? <laughs> how do you think they feel about you from their initial insight? How true or even fair does that feel? Oh my gosh, that's a lot to 
take in. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, so I got my uh, entry. <laughs> this is what I came up with. The character on the other side of the rift has a human face. It's hard to tell with all the swirling and sparkling colors that surround the rift, but it looks like a female wear wearing incredibly colorful clothes. They seem to be looking for a way out, looking intensely to the other side, which is my side. Are they trying to escape their world? Question <laughs> mark. Their face looks worried and surprised. I don't think they expected to see someone on the other side. My first impulse is to leave the window, but my curiosity gets the best of me. I want to know more. The woman on the other side must think I am from another galaxy. She must have noticed my spaceship, the Millennium Falcon, on my shirt. She probably thinks I come from a world with advanced technology where we fly through space <laughs> to other galaxies. She has no idea how wrong she is, as traveling to other galaxies is a feat only accomplished in movies. So yeah, if someone's gonna notice something about me, it'll probably be my Star Wars shirt. <laughs> I mean, I, I drew inspiration from my deck of cards, right? I'm not gonna say that I have a deck of cards because uh, <laughs> this is just used for a game, but how appropriate that out of all the cards, uh, I, I, I don't have a regular deck of cards. I do not own a uh, like a like a plain, like a, you know, like a boring. I, I of course have a Star Wars set because that's probably the, the first thing she's gonna notice about me. I'm a Star Wars fan. So I came up with this idea of, well, if she sees my Millennium Falcon, she probably thinks that we fly through, through space. <laughs> so anyways, um, so far so good. Let's keep going. We're gonna turn their page. Okay, let's see what comes next. So it says the rift settles, the swirling colors fade away, leaving a clear view into somewhere else. On the other side of the rift, you see, let's see what we see. I thought I saw a person, but see, now maybe, uh, maybe it's not a person. Maybe it, I was confused and it's a bunny. <laughs> I saw there's a bunny somewhere in there. So let's get a card and we get, oh, fader. <laughs> So we got an A, which is not here. <laughs> Do we draw again? Why is it not here? Because it should be J, Q, K, maybe A here. Uh, let's just draw again. And this time we got a four. So books, so many books. <laughs> so there's books and I guess we can keep our woman. <laughs> All right, and it says, describe what you see in detail, including the results above and anything else you notice. Fill in the rest of the screen visually. Oh, the scene. Fill in this rest of the scene visually? Oh, okay, like, okay, talk about it, like, describe it. What are your impressions so far? Are you full of surprise, fear, excitement, anxiety? Are you happy, relieved, or disappointed with the direction the rift goes after what you've observed so far? What other kinds of beings do you think live in this place? What do you think they do? The rift is clear, and we see books, many, many books. <laughs> Let's write about it. So here's what I came up with. Uh, as the colors and swirling lights clear, I am able to better look at this new world in front of me. To my surprise, I see what appears to be a library. There are books everywhere. I tried to see if I recognize any of them, but none of them look familiar. Behind the woman, sh behind the woman, coma. <laughs> There we go. Shelves collecting dust are filled to the brim with these books. It seems nobody has read them in years. They seem to be just collections of things past. Her world is starting to look very similar to my own. I am disappointed to see a world very much like my own where technology has taken over and the things of the past have been left behind. I wonder if her world is just like mine and if humanity there has taken the same course as our own. Yeah, so, I mean, why they give me books? I wanted something cool. <laughs> I wanted, like, the world to be different. I really did. But uh, it is what it is, and this story is going somewhere. I don't know. It looks, to me, it, it's like maybe I'm looking at a different country. Maybe the woman is far away, but it's still, but then again, I didn't recognize the books, and that's important. That's how I know it's a different world, because the books that she's holding over there are not the same books that you would typically see uh, on a library shelf. But let's move on and see what else is in store for us. As if the rift itself isn't amazing enough, it has the ability to translate spoken words and noises. Who speaks first and what do you or they say? Okay, so we're gonna pull a card. If it's a face card, a jack, a queen, or a king, you speak first. Skip this table, so let's see. Let's see if we speak first or if they do. Who's gonna be the one with the first word in this weird world that we've discovered? 
<laughs> and it is a two. So um, we're not going to skip it, right? Because we will only skip it if it was a face card. So we're going to go to the table. Otherwise, your kindred spirit speaks first. Use the table below to see what kind of thing they say. Okay. So we're going to, I guess we have to shuffle this one back as well. So let's get another one and see what she says. One more. Okay, there we go. And she says 10. Actually, we're looking at the heart. Uh, best friends over here. <laughs> It's funny how one can go so long without dreams that they begin to show up during our waking hours. That's what she says. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It's funny how one can go so long without dreams that they begin to show up during our waking hours. So she thinks I'm a dream. Has she been dreaming about me? Okay. So let's move on. Uh, if you pulled a face card, I didn't. Uh, so if you pulled a non-face card, keeping the results from the chart above in mind, begin to write about your conversation with the being. Note, regardless of result, when the conversation veers towards speaking about your kindred spirit surroundings, consult the chart that follows to find out more about where the rift opened. Okay, so let's just begin to start writing about our conversation with her. So I didn't want to go too much into detail. So this is what I came up with. She speaks and I can hear her clearly. She said she had been going so long without dreaming and now she's dreaming while awake. It is interesting that she thinks this is a dream. Am I dreaming too? Is it a result of my lack of air? I just now remember how uncomfortable I am feeling. But I respond by telling her this is not a dream. So of course, you know, uh, it's now a, a good time to start asking her, where in the world is she? <laughs> and it says, uh, when the conversation veers towards speaking about your kindred spirit surroundings, consult the chart that follows to find out more about where the rift opened. So we're going to go to the chart. I think we can actually do it here since it's a long chart. And we're going to, eventually you come to find out that on the other side of the rift is, we'll see what it is, it is an eight, a world where your reality is a popular series of novels, but you're a side character, not the star. Oh my goodness, so she recognized me. <laughs> I mean, I must be the one in the, in the novel wearing the Star Wars shirt all the time. <laughs> No wonder she thinks she's, uh, she's dreaming. So how did you come to learn this? What do you think your kindred spirit thinks about their world? If you've held back a lot, do you wonder if they've done the same? How did your interaction end? Did either of you go through the rift? Do you wish anything went differently? How would life change for you both if everyone could freely travel through the portal? Would one side suffer while the other improved? Would both benefit? That's a very good question that I don't know the answer to. All right, but we're back to writing. Let's do it. So when we left off, she told me she was dreaming and I'm like, no, we're not dreaming. And this is what she said. She responded, of course I am. You're not real. You're just a character in the faraway galaxy by George Tolkien. See what I did there? She tells me about the novels and how I am the comedy relief character always using humor. That does sound like me. <laughs> it does. She begins describing my world and people who I know and we are all in these books. I am more confused than ever. How did we end up in a book? And is that really all we are? Is our world just a story? If it is, I wonder if it has a happy ending. I try to ask her, but the rift disappears and I am left alone in front of my usual view. The woman is gone. My thoughts turn to think about what could possibly happen if she had been able to go through the portal. This could have been an opportunity for her to tell the story of Earth and change our ending for the best. She could have helped... Uh, helped... <laughs> She could have helped our world get better, stronger. But would we have listened? Yeah, because do we listen? <laughs> I feel like sometimes we don't listen even though we know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's, it's a story. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for me, it was more of a, she has books, so she read the books and we're in her story. That's kind of weird. So it was more of a, I took it as she's telling me, uh, about my world because she lives in the real world. Uh, all right, so you're done with this rift, at least for now. But now that you know how to create rifts, you can return anytime or open another rift elsewhere. Oh, cool. I know how to create rifts. Just open a window. Huh? Would you rather explore another place next or return to your kindred spirit's world? Why? If you aren't with your kindred spirit now, do you miss them? Do you think they miss you? What effect does your kindred spirit have on your life? Did you learn anything from this interaction? What if I told you that you can open rifts anytime, anywhere with your imagination, by looking out a window or with a good piece of media or conversation? 
and that, my friends, is our last entry. So we're going to go and talk about how we feel now that she's left. And here's the ending to our story. If I could, I would love exploring other worlds. But first, I would like to go back to this woman and ask her more about these novels. I would mostly want to know how they end. I did not learn much from our interaction, but it does have an effect on me. To know that in another world we are but a story, it's very weird. But we write stories about other worlds all the time. Could those worlds really exist? I will have to look out many windows to find out. The end. For now. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of interesting. It was different for sure. Uh, and I think, um, you know, it, 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 looks, it looks like I just wrote a movie. <laughs> a movie where... I am, I am in the movie. Uh, is that even possible? And, and, and you know, it's what I said is true. We write about other worlds all the time, and and I'm sure there's a sci-fi movie there where we're writing a we're reading a book, and there's uh, we're writing a we're reading a book, but the there's a world out there that's actually living that story. But now it was reversed. We are the story. So I mean, I love I love how these things push you to think and out of the box, right, and to come up with the just following those prompts, but it makes you a creator in a way. So thank you to Beth and uh, Angel for, uh, you know, sharing these amazing stories with us. And uh, uh, right down here, it tells us where you can find them. So if you would like to, you know, get your own story and create something just like this, <laughs> your story will probably go very different from mine. And that's the fun thing about that, that the different prompts allow you to go in so many different directions. We didn't even, I didn't even look at the other uh, prompts in the chart because I didn't want to ruin it for me because if I play it again, who knows? Maybe I'll be going to a very different place where there are no books. <laughs> well guys, there you have it. That was a full run through of There's Always a Window. Hope you enjoyed the story. What would your story would have been like if you had gotten the same prompts? How would it have been different from the one I created? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Uh, and to subscribe to Meeple Village if you haven't done so already. And let me know if you want to see more of these books because there there are, uh, or more of these games, I should say, because there are tons out there that I didn't even know existed. So it's a whole new world for us to explore together. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. May you play more games. Uh,